for context, I live in the Midwest in a suburban area. My boyfriend lives about 30 to 60 minutes away from me, depending on if I use either the interstate highway or the city roads. That being said, I usually take the interstate, then take the highway partway home, since the highway is only about a mile or so away from his neighborhood, and I take it all the way to the interstate. There is also another road I can take, a paved country road with one lane on each side of the road with no street lights. It eventually meets up with a few main streets, which are numbered roads, and it will take you back towards the highway and city. I'm sorry for all the background about the roads, but I feel it's important. And I feel like my choice was a definite sign that the butterfly effect is always in works. On to the story. Earlier today, I went to pick up my boyfriend and we basically hung out and binged watched a TV show I recently got him in. Around 11 p.m., he says he probably should go home since he works in the morning. I agree and drive him home using the interstate with no problems. We kiss goodbye and that I am on my way out of the neighborhood and towards the street that takes me to the main roads. If I turn right, it's a straight shot to the highway. If I turn left, I could take it down to the country road for a bit of a late night drive. I decide to take the ladder. I turn left, then turn right at the stoplight and begin to drive through the dark country night. So I had my windows rolled down and my music up, just letting the breeze come in. It was pretty windy, so my car was swerving a little, and you couldn't see the stars or anything because the clouds were taking over the sky, building up a storm. I thought about switching on my high beams to see better, but the road was really curvy and had lots of hills, and I was afraid of accidentally blinding someone coming from the opposite direction. What happened next makes me glad I didn't turn them on. On the left side there was a small patch of woods with overgrowth. To my right were wide open fields, and in front of me was a hill. Toward the crest of the hill I saw something beginning to cross the road, something large and dark, with what looked like antlers on its head. I thought maybe at first it was a deer, or even an elk, and I slowed down. But when I got closer, I realized something was wrong. One of the things that were wrong was it was moving very slow, like it was hurt or something, and it didn't even glance at me. It just kept moving toward the patch of trees on my left, which I thought seemed weird. I felt like it should have at least acknowledged the sound of my vehicle. The second thing was, this thing, this animal that I presumed was a deer or an elk, couldn't have been. It was at least the size of a moose, but that couldn't be right, because where I am from, there are no moose. We had deer and maybe some elk, but no moose. I felt a cold wave of dread wash over me as I watched this moose thing make its way across the road, and then it stopped, and it looked right at me. It twisted its head so fast to look at me I almost screamed. Its face was hideous. It looked rotten somehow, like it was withering away, and its eyes were so dark. I was so scared, it didn't have any eyes. There was something dripping from where the mouth was, and I could see sharp teeth poking from its lips as they pulled back into a sneer. I thought about reversing my car and hightailing it out of there, but I was frozen. You know how when adrenaline kicks, they say you either enter fight or flight mode? Well, they don't tell you that there's a third option, and that's to freeze, which is exactly what I did. I just stayed in place, my hands still on the wheel, foot still digging into the brakes. I don't know how long I sat there staring at this thing, with the thing staring back at me, but when it started towards my car, I honestly thought that was going to be the end of me. I couldn't move, couldn't blink, could barely even breathe. All I could do was hope and pray that I wouldn't be ended by some freakish moose looking monster, and then a pair of lights began to rise over the hill toward us, and as the other vehicle's high beams shined on the thing in the road, it let out a curdling scream that didn't sound entirely human. It was animalistic and sort of raspy, it's hard to explain, but I watched as that thing got on its hind legs and lurched itself across the road into the thicket of the trees and bushes, narrowly missing the other person. I knew this thing would probably come back if I stayed where I was, so before I could give it the chance, I slammed on my gas pedal and gunned it out of there, going well over the posted speed limit. I just wanted to get as far away from it as possible. Every dark curve or patch of trees or field made me feel so paranoid that I could see the creature again, and all I wanted to do was go home and never for the life of me drive on that country road again. I made it home safe, but was shaken, and to cut a long story short, my family thought I was just being hysterical and had just seen a deer, but I know what I saw, and this thing wasn't a deer. It couldn't have been. I've read up on skinwalkers, 
but I'm not sure if it's what I saw. I mean, do they even exist out in the Midwest? I thought that was more in Arizona or New Mexico. Why would a skinwalker be here? Why would it come after me? Was it even a skinwalker or was it something else entirely? Was it my mind playing tricks on me? What was that thing? Please, if anyone knows what it was or has any idea of it, please tell me. I'm so scared I'm going to come across that thing again and I don't know if next time I'll be as lucky. This is 100% true, so this will probably be a boring account compared to some of the other posts here, but I wanted to share this memory somewhere and maybe get opinions on the matter. I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. My mom would often take us camping in the summers. This particular camping trip was somewhere in the vicinity of Shiprock, New Mexico. My mother took my older brother, Chris, 10, and myself, 8, camping often in those days and preferred dispersed camping on BLM slash NPS land to camping in merged grounds. She usually find us a spot and make herself busy setting up the tents and pit, while Chris and I would scamper around and explore the area and be generally unhelpful. On this particular trip, we arrived in the middle of the day, and as my mom started setting up camp, Chris and I started to explore the area around our campsite. We wandered into the woods of our campsite, being in the desert, it was really just stunted trees and sagebrush, so I hesitate to describe it as a forest, but the trees and brush were taller than me and provided a decent screen. I wandered down into a gully and came face to face with what I described to my mother as a wolf kangaroo. It was crouched low, with long, slender arms reaching down to the ground and large, pointed ears like a deer. The fur covering its body was sandy brown and patchy, as if it had mange. It had large, orange eyes and a snout like a wolf or a coyote. It bared its teeth at me and stood up. At its full height, it was the biggest animal I had ever seen, towering over us and the sagebrush. I had never been, and probably still have never been, as frightened as I was then. Chris and I started screaming for our mom to come to our rescue. Chris regained his senses before me, taking off running back up the embankment to the campsite. The wolf kangaroo turned and sort of, I don't know, Speed skated away from us through the brush and tree. Its legs were backwards, like a dog's, and its strides took it far away and fast, faster than any deer or antelope I'd ever seen. After a split second of staring at it in horror, I followed my brother up the embankment, screaming for my mom. We were so frightened that my mom packed us back into the car and moved camps, conceding for once to stay in the managed campground. Chris and I were too scared to sleep in our tent that night, and we clung to mom at the smallest twig snapping in the brush. So that's my story. It's boring compared to some of the others here, but it's 100% true, and I wanted to share. I vividly remember the way this animal moved as it glided away from us into the desert, and the sheer, utter horror I felt looking into its face. Chris and I have never managed to find an explanation for what we saw that day in the brush. I used to work at a local coal mining company on the Navajo Reservation as an operator for a coal haulage crew. I drove haulage equipment, and it was one of those Crest 240-ton coal haul belly dump trucks. If you've ever seen those trucks, they're pretty huge. They're about two to three stories high and about one-third the length of a football field. I remember that I was working the night shift, which started around 11 p.m. Before we started the shift, we required to do a pre-start inspection of our equipment. I walked around my truck and when I went up to the rear of the truck and lowered its stairs that gave me access to the engine bay, I walked up the stairs and started my inspection. I found a pretty bad coolant leak on the truck. I climbed back down and went to the cab and called my haulage supervisor. He answered and asked me if I can drive the truck to the main shop for repairs. So I left the ready line and drove six to eight miles back to the shop and I called the shop maintenance supervisor and he instructed me to drive around back of the shop and park the truck there. I drove around the shop, parked the truck, and I wanted to see how much coolant I had left. I climbed back down from the cab, walked around to the back side of the truck, and lowered the stairs. I checked the coolant level, and I had a significant loss of coolant. I called my supervisor over the radio and asked him to pick me up. As I started to walk away from the truck towards the shop, I seen it. It was big, like a bull. It walked weird. Patches of tan fur missing, blotches of blackened skin, and its head was big. The head was as large as a pumpkin, and it wobbled around like it was unbalanced. 
It had an unnatural look, nothing like I'd ever seen. This thing walked on all fours and about four to five feet tall. It was about a hundred feet away and was walking toward me. My first instinct was that it was a sick dog, mange infested and malnourished. It continued to walk toward me and I thought this sucker might be sick and have rabies. I took out my flashlight and shined the light at it, yelling at it to stay away. It continued to walk towards me. It was then that I noticed it wasn't alive. Its eyes did not give off any reflection and were black and solid. It was unnatural. I reached for my pocket knife and yelled at it to stop. It stopped when it was about 20 feet away. I was still walking towards the shop and it paralleled me all the way there. I never looked away. I thought it could attack me. By the time I got to the shop door entrance, it started walking towards the east. I went inside and got the shop supervisor and we both came out. It wasn't about a minute later and it was gone. We walked to the east and my supervisor drove up. Now there was only one way into the back side of the shop and my supervisor should have seen it. He didn't. I explained to him what I saw and he said he didn't see it on the way into the shop. My supervisor said that I saw a skinwalker and that it usually was seen walking around the shop. The rest of the shift I stayed with my supervisor. I think he was scared. I wasn't scared nor did I go into shock like some people describe. It was an experience that I would never forget. To this day, I don't know what I witnessed those few days, nor do I want to know. I think it would be better that way. To set the scene with some background information, I'm a 20-year-old Latino woman. I'm a Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps and have spent a year in Afghanistan back in 2015. During the time of this experience, my girlfriend and I took a camping trip and for the sake of this story, I will call her Olivia. I've grown up in a very wooded area of Florida many trees and animals of all sorts, alligators, bears, panthers, coyotes, and sometimes wolves from people owning them and letting them into the wild when they got big. The area we had gone to was new terrain for us. She insisted we go somewhere new and explore around, since I would have to return to California to my duty station in a few days. She wanted to explore the new terrain with me. We walk along the beaten path, admiring nature in the wooded areas, flowers, and even small animals and birds that inhabited the area. Olivia went to college for zoology, so she enjoyed teaching me about the different animals and the ways to identify them by their tracks and other signs. As we were walking to the camp clearing in this particular forest, we came across a hardly visible pathway, winding deeper into the brush. Her nature calling was pulling her into it. She wanted to explore and find a place inside to set up camp, but call it military intuition, but I felt really uneasy with the idea. Reluctantly, with her pleading, I agreed. We then began to trek through the brush, thorny vines cutting up my legs through my jeans, and a spider web hitting me in the face every now and again due to the overlaying branches. We walked for roughly 45 minutes until we came into a clearing, deciding this was the best spot we could set up camp. Olivia pitched our tents as I got the fire roaring, and at this point, the dusk is creeping in on us. We lay down to settle in for the night, and all is well. That is, until I'm awakened by things being thrown by the side of my tent. It takes me a little bit for my eyes to adjust to the darkness. The campfire was now a dim glow. My eyes finally adjust as I look around. I wasn't truly awake until the smell hit me like a semi-truck. The smell of rotting garbage. It was sickening. As I tried to gain my composure, that's when I saw the figure. It was tall, very large and stocky, and appeared very human-like, just too large to be a person. There was still tapping against the tent, some large, others small, but I didn't make a peep. My voice was lodged in my throat, and I'm not even sure at this point I was breathing. All the hair on my body was on end. I was terrified. Olivia shifted in her sleep, opening her eyes. Hey, is everything okay? I cut her off by placing my hand over her mouth, raising a finger to my lips in order to tell her to be quiet. That's when I heard it. The growling. It was low, more like a grumble and a groan than a growl, but it was a sound like no other. It was enough to make even my drill sergeants piss themselves. Our eyes directed to the zipper and it began to move. It slowly started unzipping. Whatever this thing was, it was getting into our tent. I reached next to me and grabbed a small handgun I took everywhere with me. 
and took aim. A rather loud bang is heard as I took my shot, making a direct hit into the thing's shoulder. A monstrous growl scream is heard. It rattled me to the bone, and Olivia only cried out of pure fear. We watched as this figure disappeared, and we didn't fall asleep just in case it returned. I stayed with her all night, my handgun at my side. The next morning, we were packing all of our stuff and getting ready to head out when we saw it. A stocky figure standing in the tree line. It was around eight, maybe nine feet tall. It was large, hairy, and seemed rather human-like. Besides its dark, deep eyes and fur-covered body, it just watched us as we collected our things. We never broke eye contact either. The thing just watched before sinking back into the woods. We've never ran so fast in our lives back to the main road. Olivia still has nightmares about this thing that terrorized us by throwing things and opening our tent. And I'll admit, the thing really creeped me out. Let me just tell you, I haven't been camping since. During the summer of 2016, my larger group of friends and I went camping out at this spot called Desert Creek. It's a place that's about a hundred miles from any town, deep in some mountains in Nevada. I'm not of any sort of native descent, but I've heard a few skinwalker stories before. I didn't believe them too much, until this night. My large group drove out to the camp spot and got set up. Being stupid teenagers, we started drinking. It was 4th of July weekend, so the camp spots were sort of busy, but all of the spots were pretty far apart, so we didn't think we would have too many problems. The drinking started around 2 in the afternoon, right after we set up camp. While setting up my tent, I noticed some odd footprints, but didn't think too much of it. By the time night fell, all of us were pretty drunk. I decided I had to go take a leak, so I walked over to a tree. But before I could, I saw what looked like a coyote, but something was off about it. It turned and looked at me and stood up on two feet, and it sounded like it was trying to say something to me, but it couldn't get out the words. They were just sounds for a few seconds. I was paralyzed with fear, and then it seemed like the words started to become more clear, but it's still not right. I heard my best friend, let's call him C. C's voice came from its mouth. Hey, hand me another beer. That's when I snapped out of it. I turned and ran back to camp and told everyone, but no one believed me, and I wasn't sure if I believed myself. But after, I became really paranoid. I thought I could hear sounds all night. When it was time to go to bed, I had almost forgotten about it. Keep in mind, we were about two thirty-six packs in between about eight of us. I was lying in my tent listening to the crackling of the fire when all of a sudden I could hear footsteps, but they were scattered. I looked out the window of the tent and saw a humanoid figure about ten feet away standing next to the fire staring at me. Then it said again in C's voice, Hey guys, I think I'm gonna go to bed. That's when I heard C say from his tent, What was that? He poked his head out of the tent and screamed. Everybody got up at that point, and that's when this thing turned and lunged at my other friend. Let's call him Jay. Jay jumped out of the way and hopped into his car, which was right next to his tent. The thing then howled this terrifying sound, and that's when I realized the smell of rotten eggs and burning garbage. The thing ran away and C said, Guys, we need to get out of here. We all hopped into our cars and started driving out. When one of my friends in front of me stopped about a mile from the main road, I got out with the pistol my dad had let me borrow for protection, and I realized my friend's truck had a flat tire. We all heard the howl again and it sounded like it was in the middle of the canyon where we were in, about a 25 minute drive away from us. We thought we would be okay, so we got to work putting the spare tire on. We had only just gotten the flat tire off and we started to smell the rancid odor again. We stopped and looked around and heard the howl once again this time right next to us. We bolted to our cars and tried to drive away when this thing jumped out in front of the car and stood up. The creature looked into my eyes and spoke once more, but in a demonic-like voice. Gonna have to try harder than that. I slammed on the gas and this thing jumped over my car. We got out of there and drove 150 miles back home, still drunk and way past curfew, but we didn't care. The next morning, I drove my friend back to his truck. And when we both got there, we were both struck with this terrible feeling in our stomachs. His truck's windows were broken and scratched into the car all over the place was every single one of our full names. There were two animals in the bed of the truck, but we couldn't tell what kind of animals they were because they were so mangled. From that point on, we had never given a thought to going camping at Desert Creek ever again.
I will not say my name for this story, as I am afraid they will find me, but you can call me Rose. I was 14 when it happened, so about a year ago. I was at a powwow with my friends, a young girl, let's call her Lily, and her older sister, Saria. It was getting late, probably around 10 p.m., when we came up with the idea to tell scary stories. I've always been fascinated by skinwalker stories, though I have never seen one myself. Well, that was about to change. I came up with a story and told my friends, then Lily, then Saria. After telling stories, we finally got tired and went to bed. Saria and Lily slept in a small tent while I slept in a camper with my dad. I've been up where the powwow is many times and we call the area the grounds. I'm not really a native. I have a little Blackfoot, but I'm mostly Irish. The grounds are full of mostly Cherokee. Anyway, I came up with a stupid idea to scare my friends. I went outside next to their tent and snapped a twig. Then I made loud footsteps along with hard breathing and groaning noises. I could see their shadows sit up, so I knew they were awake. I was just about to shake the tent when I heard footsteps behind me. I knew there were bears and big cats in the woods, but they rarely come in the grounds because all of the lights and people. I didn't want to take any chances, so I slowly walked towards my camper. Then I hear the same groaning noises I made behind me. I thought it was Lily or Saria trying to get me back, but something wasn't right. It sounded just like my voice. Ha ha, very funny guys. I call back to their tent. Ha ha, very funny guys, said someone who sounded just like me in the woods. Then I see Lily and Saria walk out of their tent. Will you stop? We're trying to sleep said Saria in an annoyed voice. A branch breaks and echoes in the woods. Saria and Lily look behind them to see nothing. I think a bear is out there. Hurry, come inside my camper, I whisper to them. They both walk towards me, when suddenly a loud, curdling scream filled my ears. It sounded like a girl and a dog screaming in the woods. Loud footsteps came closer to us. We ran as fast as we could to my camper and slammed the door shut. I looked out the window and see a dark shadow next to my friend's tent. Then I did something I still regret to this day. I got a flashlight and shined it at the figure. It had the head of a bear and the upper body of a human and the legs of some kind of dog. It stood on its hind legs and stared at us with glowing eyes. I screamed so loud I probably woke everyone up from a mile away. My dad came running. What's wrong? Are you okay? I yelled, skinwalker. I saw a skinwalker. My dad got out his shotgun while his friend, who was staying the night, let's call him Jack, grabbed a bowl of sage. My dad ran out the door to see nothing. Jack lit the sage and put it in the bowl outside the front door. We stayed inside the rest of the night. The next morning, we went out to investigate the area where the skinwalker was. All of us almost puked from the rotten smell of animals. I went home the next day. You would think the story ends there, but sadly no. There's more. I was laying in bed trying to sleep when I heard footsteps outside my window. I looked at my window to see a face of a bear. It followed me home. I screamed, but I was home alone because my mom was still at work. The skinwalker banged at my window, cracking it. I tried to let out another scream, but what came out was a loud growl. The creature froze. I did something I thought I would never do. I ran to the window and yelled, Go away. Be gone. At the creature. Slowly, it backed away into the woods. I stayed up all night waiting for it to come back, but it never did. Why did it follow me home? And why did I do what I did? I probably will never know, but all I care about is it's never coming back. I'm 15 now, and still no sight of the monster. Hopefully, I will never see something like that again. My name is Jonathan. I'm 22. I've encountered this creature twice, so I'm covering the first time I saw the thing, which was when I was 14 and lived with my parents. My grandparents told me stories of skinwalkers, and they took them quite literally, which is how I knew what this thing was. One night, I was getting ready to go to bed, and my cat was in my window. As I went to get into bed, he started growling. I didn't really think much of it, just thought maybe he saw a deer or a straight cat or dog. He kept going and started hissing. Then my curiosity got the best of me and I looked out the window. I froze. I hadn't looked directly at it. I had just looked at my yard and its glowing red eyes caught the corner of my eye. 
I knew exactly what it was. I tried to move, but I just couldn't as it just stared at me and my cat, still hissing and growling. A couple of seconds went by and it let out a curdling scream, so loud it might as well have been right in front of me. I broke the gaze and closed the curtains, grabbing my cat and getting away from the window. Then, not a couple seconds later, I heard it tapping at my window. I knew they were really fast, so I wasn't surprised that it got to my window so quickly. My gut had sank at this point, and I couldn't move. My cat was silent but on edge, and all of its hair was standing up. Then it tried to speak. There's no explanation on how it did this, but that it's been around for a very long time. It said, Jonathan, come here. I need your help. The most frightening part about that was it was in my dad's voice, but he had been gone for over a year now. The tapping continued for about 10 minutes and stopped completely. Longest 10 minutes of my life. After it stopped, I heard footsteps stomp off quickly into the woods where I lived. I didn't get any sleep that night, and the next morning everyone was up and didn't seem like they had heard anything, and acted like everything was normal. I haven't told anyone, and you're the only person I've told this. I couldn't tell if it was a skinwalker or a wendigo, as I didn't see any of its features except that it had glowing red eyes, and that it mimicked my dad. I was 15 when this happened. I have some family in Arizona, so I decided to go out there for the summer. I was very bold and stupid. My grandmother used to say, you're like a young wolf cub, always trying to figure out your things. That can lead to trouble. I didn't understand at the time what she meant by that. My uncle, let's call him Tom, told my cousins and I when I arrived not to go out at night. I thought to myself, why not? Sure, the place is colder at night, but I'm 15, almost a man. So I waited until he, his wife, and children went to sleep that night. I snuck out of the house quietly. I was wandering around looking at everything, houses, stores, etc. I had walked two to three miles away from the house when I realized that I needed to take a leak somewhere away from the streetlights. I found a house with no one living in it not too far from the road. I stepped off the street going around the right side of the house. I was in the middle of doing my business and I thought I heard a cry from a little girl, but it sounded somewhat off, like if it was coming from a tunnel or something far off in the distance. I listened closer for a while before stepping in that direction I thought it may have come from. I yelled, hey, little girl, where are you? Then the crying just stopped. I was confused. What was going on? That's when I heard it. My own voice, but not quite right. More like a growl reply. I'm scared. Can you come to the other side and help me get home? The home was almost a dog's growl. My mind was racing now that I was fully creeped out, and I felt an overpowering need to run. As I turned to do just that, I heard movement from somewhere behind me. At the same time, I started smelling something like rotten meat. Looking back, I saw it. I think it was trying to look human but the way it moved like a movie zombie, all stiff. Though once it saw me, it started moving much smoother, plus its eyes were wrong. They look like dog eyes when light hits them at night. As it moved closer, the thing tried to mimic my Uncle Tom's voice. I just ran from it, but as messed up as its walk was, the thing was fast. I ran full speed, but the thing was catching up fast. The thing passed me, then turned into the middle of the road. I saw something about it, now that it was in the streetlight. Not only was its eyes dog-like, but the face was no longer human, but looked like a coyote now. My instincts told me to run the other way. I was frozen, and before my eyes, the rest of the body snapped and popped as it was transforming into the coyote on all fours. I ran in the direction of my uncle's house. I heard it coming for me as I ran. This is where something weird happened. As it got close this time, my mind went blank. I don't know how to explain this, but I'll do my best. I saw a gray wolf in my mind's eye, and I turned, realizing a growl from my mouth that even sounded like a wolf's growl. The thing stopped, clocked its head to the side, and just stared at me. The thing looked like a coyote, but it was standing on its hind legs. 
I started walking backwards, seeing the gray wolf, and knowing I was using my instincts at the moment, that if I turned to run, it would cease to chase me down and get me. I kept my eyes on it until I was almost to my uncle's door, where I regained control of my mind. Going into the house, I heard scratching on the door, asking in different voices to be let in for an hour. Then it left. It did come back the next night to my uncle's house, but Tom knew what it was after. Looking at it through the window of the front door, it pretended to be human again, but tried to use my voice to get Tom to open the door. He went straight to work, burning sage and other herbs. Afterwards, asking me if I was the only one it was after, I told him everything. He was mad, telling me, you're safe for the night, but I'm sending you home in the morning. I know he was mad, but I needed to know what this was. He told me it was a skinwalker, and it was going to hunt me until it loses my scent. He told me about the legend of them, but the wolf thing, he smiled and said that, you'll have to figure that one out for yourself. The next day, I was picked up by my mom. I am afraid to go back that way. I don't walk at night anymore, and I still have no answer about the wolf thing that stopped through my mind that night. I was heading to a small town in southern Utah with my wife and a couple of friends. We were on our way to see Lee, a friend of mine that hadn't been seen for a long time. We met up with him at his place and decided to hang out at a nearby lake. It was a typical quiet campsite with a fire pit and a couple of logs around it. We had a little picnic there and we were exchanging stories and catching up with each other all day. Eventually, one of my friends, Bryce, got tired and decided to fall asleep in the car while the rest of us continued talking. At this point, twilight had fallen. Erica and I were discussing something while my wife and Lee were talking about something else. All of a sudden, my wife and Lee fall silent. Erica and I quickly notice. We look at them and Lee says, Get in the car. I asked him what's wrong. And he says, There might be a skinwalker around. Now, Erica and I had no idea what a skinwalker was at the time, so we asked him to explain. After his explanation of what it was, Erica and I, being the only sensible thinkers at the moment, and Bryce, just barely waking up from us jumping in the car, decide we should investigate, believing that it was probably just some kids in a nearby campsite trying to mess with us. We came to the top of the hill that was between our campsite and looked for any likely candidates for the scare. None. All we could see was a couple of trees and some bushes. We even called out and there was no response. As we were walking back to the campsite, we heard it. A rustling in the bushes behind us. We look again but see nothing. At this point, we were considering that Lee and my wife may be right. We get back and it's getting dark fast, so I ask them, is there something we can do to keep them away for a little bit? Yes, said Lee. They don't like fire. And Tim, my wife, and Bryce start working on the fire, while me and Erica go down by the lake to collect the two liters we had put there in the water to keep cold. Now it's dark, and Erica and I headed back with the sodas. We hear rustling in the bushes beside us. We're both scared. We hurry back and start putting everything back in the car as soon as possible, while Lee made sure the fire kept burning. After getting everything into the car, I rush over to the fire pit and tell everyone to get in the car as I proceeded to stomp the fire out. Right as the fire went out, I hear a curling scream across the lake. I felt my heart stop. Lee had said skinwalkers are fast and could make up a full lap around the lake in a matter of seconds. I jump in the car and yell, go. Right as the engine started and the lights come on, we see it. Coming out of the bushes right in front of us, glowing yellow eyes and what looked like a zombified coyote with decaying flesh. A skinwalker. We backed up and peeled out of there as fast as we could. This happened two years ago and it still scares me to how close of a call it was. I am honestly amazed that we all survived such a close encounter with this skinwalker. When I was about 11 or 12, we lived in a small house made of mud and stone, a lot like our house now. It was two of my brothers and I in the house. Everyone else had gone to the feast and left us to tend the sheep. We were getting ready for bed when we heard the dogs going crazy outside, thinking it was nothing more than coyotes howling in the distance. We told them to be quiet. We began to drift off into sleep, and the dogs would not shut up. Somehow, I was able to get a few hours of sleep. Then, I woke up very late in the night. It was very quiet and still in the house, except for my brother snoring and breathing. I realized I needed to use the outhouse and woke up my brother to take me there. 
He teased me about being scared, which I certainly was. We went out with our flashlight to the outhouse. The dogs began with their crazed barking out in the sagebrush, going from one place to the next. My brother went first and I waited for him outside. While waiting, I tried to follow the dogs with my flashlight. Suddenly, there was a very loud whine from one of the dogs. Then everything went silent again. It was really too quiet for that time of year. Not even the sheep were making noise. Suddenly, I heard a few of the dogs going completely mad by the truck. When I looked over, there was this man. He was unbelievably tall, leaning one arm on the cab roof of the truck. He was looking at the dogs for a little. They all scattered in different directions. The thing looked up at me, and I saw its face. It had a pure white face, like a full moon, two burning yellow eyes, and a slight smile that was pure black. I could not move or make a sound. It began to walk towards me with long strides, until it finally towered over me. All I began to see was dark red. I kept getting deeper and deeper into its eyes. I could faintly hear my brother coming out of the outhouse. With this, the thing looked up at him. Reality came rushing back to me. I noticed my brother was too distracted with his buckle to realize what was going on. I noticed this thing's long hands hovering just inches from my head. Its skin was black ash and smelled like rotten flesh in the summer. I was still unable to move or speak. The skinwalker began to move toward my brother. Finally noticing this figure, my brother became paralyzed as I was. Closer and closer it drew. Reaching its arm out toward my brother's head, something finally snapped in me. I became unbearably angry. I broke from the trance and lunged at the skinwalker, raising my arms like a wild animal and baring my teeth at it. A growl came out that I never knew I could make. I became more angrier at the thing that it was trying to hurt us. It kept that smile at first, but the angrier I got, the more the smile faded. Finally, with everything I had, I began to make a primal roar at it. It fell backwards and ran into the night. Looking back at me, its eyes were dim and dull, its smile now long since gone. The next morning, my family returned home from the feast. After relaying the story to my parents, they quickly hired a medicine man. I'm half Navajo and half Mexican. For over 20 years of my life, I've lived on the Navajo Nation Reservation in New Mexico. My Native American side of the family always warned us to be careful at night. My grandparents would always tell me stories of these shape-shifting witches who can curse you or mess with you. They called them skinwalkers because they would take the skin of animals and wear them to change into that animal or something in between a human and an animal. I never believed in it really. I'm only half Navajo and light-skinned, so I was never treated the same by most people here. So I drifted away from the culture and thought it wasn't for me. It was around summertime. This happened when I was in high school, so about six to eight years ago. I would have been like 15 to 17 then. I used to hang out with a group of guys who like to do a lot of delinquent type stuff. You know, smoke cigs and stay up all night playing video games at someone's house. Then at 3 a.m. if we felt like it, we would go sneak out to paradise. I know, it's an ironic name. It's basically a giant metal pipe that carries irrigation water to all the farms. But really, it was also a spot for kids to get drunk or high in the evenings. However, the place did have a scary history of kids and adults who drowned in the night. But I always thought those were urban legends. But at 3 a.m., that was our time. We as boys would test one another across the pipe, sort of an initiation to see how far you could go. We usually could go all the way across. Now keep in mind, this pipe goes well over three stories high. It's also wide. I'd say as wide as an average car. We would walk this thing for kicks in a group of nine at 3 a.m. So one night, me and a small group of friends were driving around bored at 2 a.m., wanting to spook each other. So I said, let's go to paradise and walk the pipe. As to most of these friends I was hanging out with had never done it. They agreed, pumped up on energy drinks, and we drove. It was pretty quiet. The sky was dark and the night was cold. The boys with me were Michael, Cody, Tommy, and Farrell. Now, Farrell was the driver because he had a car and his family was pretty well off too, so he never had to worry about cash. We got to the place and he didn't want to go, said his parents were traditional, and he wanted to just chill in the car. Basically, he wanted to text some chick, I'm sure, without us bugging him. 
I told him it's fine, keep the car locked and running in case we see something scary. Me and the other boys went on without him. As we got onto the lead pipe, a few of the guys were scared and had me take the lead. As we crawled, I'd say a fourth of the way on the pipe, talking and laughing. I noticed a faint white or light gray bat bigger than my head flying around us. It dived for us a few times. We dodged it, but then Tommy slipped because of the shoes he was wearing and almost fell off the pipe. I reached out, grabbing him on his right arm. Michael had grabbed my shirt collar and Cody grabbed his. Altogether, we got back on the pipe, shaken that we almost lost Tommy to the dark depths below. The bat was gone. We were all freaking out, but the guys wanted to continue. We laughed about it as guys usually do. We passed the halfway point on the pipe with no problems, but as we got three-fourths of the way, Michael saw something. You see, at the end of the pipe, there's a hill. Behind that hill, it's very brightly lit because of a church somewhere off in the distance. Anyway, on that hill was a black figure of pointy ears, a dog silhouette. Now, Michael was a tough guy. He yelled at that thing. I'm not scared of you, Skinwalker, and tossed a few rocks he had in his pocket. One rock hit the pipe and the other fell into the brush below. That shadow silhouette dog stood up on its two legs like a person. We all freaked out. Jaws dropped. Then Cody said, look, another one to the left. Tommy said there's another one on the right. So there's three silhouettes of pointy dog-eared people on the hill. I told them to back up so we could get back to the car. The things to the right and the left of the hill started to move down the hill towards us. Now there's just one standing on the hill, the one who stood up first. Now we're trying to go back, but we're still halfway. Under us, complete darkness. It's quiet for a few minutes. Then we heard a girl crying. Sounded like she was hurt and scared. We were overcome with a strange feeling of wanting to help. Michael wanted to go back towards the end and crawl down the pipe to help this girl. I almost followed too, but inside I said, no, this is wrong. Something isn't right. So I yelled at him and everyone, saying, are you stupid? Look at the thing up there on the hill. Did you not see those things? It's a trap. Let's leave that fake crying. If that girl is hurt, we'll come back when the sun is up in two hours. Now, the moment I said this, the crying stopped. All the guys freaked out, saying they can't believe what came over them. They said they almost forgot what we saw before. Halfway on the pipe now, we hear a drum being played. We start running. Running on this pipe, almost to the car. Corey stops us. We can all hear it, and it sounds like a pack of snarling, growling, yelping coyotes. But it's pitch dark below. But we know they are under us. We run, full speed. Not looking back in the car, we yell and drive as fast as we can back onto the dirt road to a well-lit gas station and explained what happened to Farrell. We couldn't get the girls crying out of our heads and we went back in daylight just to make sure. We did not find the girl. Instead in the area, we heard the crying and we saw a coyote watching us a close distance away. It was not shy. It looked at us for four seconds and walked into the brush. I did not go back there after that. This was about a year ago. I lived in Michigan. My older brother was planning a big cruise to Mexico and then invited me to go along. I agreed because I'd never left the country before and I thought it would be a fun trip. So it was a day before the flight and I went over to my cousins to sleep because our flight was very early and I live 40 minutes away. My cousin's backyard is completely woods with a small creek and it's beautiful down there in the summertime. But it was about March when this happened, so the woods were very bare. It was getting late, and we were all starting to go to bed. I slept in the living room while my cousin went upstairs to bed with her husband and said goodnight. I was up, just facing the window to the woods, because it always takes me a little bit to fall asleep. Then, very faintly, I saw a pair of glowing eyes off in the distance. My mind raced as I told myself it was just a deer, but the glowing eyes were getting closer and closer. Then I realized it wasn't a deer. The thing had to be at least nine or ten feet. I was horrified and paralyzed with fear. It looked like a big wolf or deer that had been decaying. The thing went back into the woods. That night I didn't sleep. When it was about four, I heard my cousin's husband walking down the steps and I told him about the whole thing that had happened that night. His eyes got very wide and said very quietly, you seen a skinwalker. 
I've done some more research about these things, and I do believe I've seen a skinwalker. I never told anyone the story because I felt like I would be called a liar, but that was one of the scariest moments of my life. To start, I'm a white female. I was adopted seven years ago by my Navajo family, and we've always been close despite my obvious cultural differences. Still, I learned about skinwalkers firsthand, and they've since then become an accepted part of my life. I left Utah at the end of 2012. The first story happened to my adopted uncle. He was driving through the canyon area. They live in Blanding, Utah, a spot not quite notorious for skinwalkers, but full of them nonetheless. It was dark outside, but the moon illuminated the canyon and brush, enough for him to see out of his side vision that something was running across the desert night. He was in his 40s and at the time, he was a police officer, so a full-grown man. He started singing and praying in Navajo and kept his eyes on the road in front of him, but he was driving at least 55 to 60 miles per hour. So the shape running through the desert was keeping pace with him, despite his high speed. He said that it looked very vaguely human-shaped, but paler than any human that he'd ever seen. Still, he didn't look directly at it, and despite his singing, he was getting more and more scared. One thing my Navajo family always taught me was that these creatures feed on our fear. This one certainly seemed to. My uncle was shaking and sweating when this running thing picked up speed, outpacing his truck, and that it was maybe 30 yards ahead of him. It made a sharp right and began to run towards the road. He knew it was going to directly intersect him, and he made up his mind to put the foot on the gas. So we got closer and he sped up, and just as the two crossed paths, it jumped onto the road. He saw it for the first time then. He described it as a skinny man in jeans, with a plaid shirt, typical reservation wear, with a long face and big yellow eyes that looked like cat eyes. Its arms were thrown up over its head, and its hands were kind of flying behind it. The worst part was its mouth was open and seemed disconnected from its jaw. The chin was just flapping around, about a foot below its nose. It leapt onto the road and just as quickly jumped out of the way of the truck, and he didn't see it again. He prayed the whole way home, and they had a ceremony shortly after that. Another encounter happened to my adopted brother, who was one of the most level-headed and unshakable men I have ever met. He was 30 when this happened. He was at their dad's house partaking in one of these ceremonies, which happens in a Hogan. The rule is that you never leave the Hogan alone, because the magic and energy that you make in one of those ceremonies is kind of like a supernatural light beacon. You never know what kind of creatures you're attracting. Still, Eric, my brother, was a pretty rational guy and wasn't afraid of the dark. He's been in the Hogan for hours, chanting and praying and all that good stuff. He needed a smoke break and to take a leak. So against the general rule, he edged out of the roundhouse and out into the night. There was nothing around except 15 or 20 parked cars, all close to the ceremony area. It was a large gathering, so Eric did his business with no incident and lit up a cigarette. He was standing there, staring off into space when he got that feeling of being watched. To shake it off, he walked away from the Hogan about 20 feet and scanned the desert. Everything was quiet, except drums coming from the back of the tent and singing within. Just as he was about to shrug off his weird feeling and chuck his cigarette butt, he saw it. Under one of the vehicles, a dark shape with two shining eyes. The eyes were animal-like. They didn't glow on their own, but had reflective light in them, and they glinted right at Eric. They were yellow. The creature didn't have the shape of any animal he'd recognized, though. He explained it to me that... It was shaped like Gollum, really skinny with a round human head. Eric walked towards the vehicle and bent down to get a closer look. Dust scrabbled around and he could hear a skittering noise. One bony arm shoved gravel his way and the next thing he knew the creature was gone and the vehicle was empty. But then he smelled this disgusting, puke-worthy stench. And he got scared then because that's one of the worst things in Navajo culture. Bad smells are treated very seriously when they're assumed to be supernatural. So he straightened back up and then he realized the source of the smell. A shadow fell over him, covering him from behind. He is around 6'2", so this thing he said it was at least 7 half feet. He was shivering and didn't move as it approached him from behind. Until it was standing inches away, he could feel it. 
he could smell it, see its shadow, and then the worst thing, he felt it breathe on his neck. Eric said that it sounded like a horse or a cow when it snorts, and its breath was warm. When he looked at his feet, he saw his shoes, and behind his right foot, a big hoof. So he closed his eyes and started to sing, and right in that moment his dad and uncle got a terrible feeling from inside the Hogan. They bolted up and exited, calling his name. They found him shivering outside, too terrified to talk, and too terrified to stop singing in Navajo. It took Eric months before he shared this with us, and he did so, expecting us to laugh or call him crazy, but I completely believe his story. While trading stories around a campfire, my friend recalled an encounter he had while serving an LDS mission. My friend's mission region had a reservation within its boundaries. However, it was relatively far from where he was serving. On occasion, him and his mission companion were asked to travel further than usual to meet with some investigators. This took them near the reservation. On their way home, their car ran out of gas, and it wasn't until late that night that they were able to continue the journey home. My friend, who was driving while his companion slept in the passenger seat, chose a different route that took him through the back roads in an attempt to get home sooner. He told us he was driving above the speed limit when he noticed movement in the woods lining the road. Because coyotes were common in the area, he took a little notice at first. Then he looked out the window and slammed on the brakes. The sudden stop jolted his companion awake, who immediately wanted to know what was wrong. My friend was shaken, and he said he would tell him once they got home. He asked him to say a prayer. By the time they made it home, his companion was eager to know what happened. My friend told him, I looked down the road next to the car and saw six men running on all fours, keeping up with the car. I was driving 40 miles an hour. I'm from Southern Ohio. My particular neck of the woods was hilly and full of the Amish. I lived deep in the countryside with my father, who was stricken with frequent seizures and was unable to work or live alone. My story takes place early in the autumn of 2014. I was a 26-year-old college dropout at the time and working part-time at a gas station. Thanks to this, I had a lot of free time on my hands, most of which was spent hiking in the woods surrounding my home. On one of my many solo hikes, I saw something that changed me. As stated before, the seasons had just changed to autumn, and the trees were just starting to change into the many brilliant shades that time of year is known for. I had decided after one of my shifts at work to get one last extended hike in before the cold started to set in for the year. I had left the house around 2.30pm and told my dad I'd be back around 7pm for dinner. Warm sun but with a cooling breeze, remarkably low humidity, and not a cloud in the sky. Perfect weather for a hike. I had been walking alongside a creek using a large branch turned into a makeshift walking stick, my usual route, for around 45 minutes when I realized the woods were quiet. Too quiet. I stopped to listen and aside from the running water to my right, there was not a sound in the forest. After shuddering from a chill, I attributed to a breeze that had cut through the trees. I continued my trek, trying my best to match the silence of the woods with each step. Another 45 to 60 minutes passed and my trail separated from the creek and began to loop back around towards my house. I had always dreaded this part of the hike due to the steep hills that lay before me and stopped to take a breather. After resuming my hike, I had made it nearly three-fourths of the way through when I felt a strong wind at my back, then a loud crack somewhere in front of me, about 40 yards ahead of me and about 15 yards to the right of the trail. A young white-tailed buck stood alert but unaware of my presence. After a few seconds of taking in the beauty of the creature, I noticed that the wind was still blowing and thought it was strange that the buck hadn't noticed me. I had always heard that being upwind of a deer would ensure that he'd be noticed and that the beast would flee. Shrugging it off, I continued walking, making sure to remain silent as to avoid spooking the buck. After walking about 15 yards, I noticed movement in the direction of the deer. Looking, I noticed he was no longer alert and began walking slowly through the brush, but I noticed something else as well. The deer was now around 30 yards away from me, but in between us, close to the ground, there was a pitch black mass moving under the cover of foliage. It was much closer to the buck and approaching him. He had yet to notice it. I froze, waiting to see what the strange creature was. 
as coyotes are the only common predator around here, and this was way too large and much too dark to be one of those. After the distance between the two forest dwellers shrunk to what couldn't have been more than 10 yards, the hidden beast stopped, and with it, the wind. Time seemed to freeze in that moment. The deer suddenly looked in the direction at me and flinched, as if it was going to sprint away, but before it could take so much as a step, a large black cat lunged at it and instantly took the deer to the ground. While shocked at the appearance of this foreign predator, I remembered that there have been stories and eyewitness reports going around for the past couple of years of a large black mountain lion roaming the hills in my county. I could no longer see the animal through the brush, but I didn't need to see to know what it looked like. Quietly, I continued along my path, wanting to avoid disturbing the feasting feline. As I walked along, I realized I was getting a clearer view of the cougar. It was bigger than I expected, having only seen them on television or in books, and the color was mesmerizing, a deeper black than anything I'd ever seen, almost as if it was pulling the light towards it, never to escape. I stopped to marvel at the cat, and as I did, it began eating. I felt bad for the deer, but it was the circle of life and all. What felt like minutes couldn't have been more than a few seconds, and I was hit with a horrid smell attributed to the deer. I noticed that the cougar wasn't black all over. Its face and hands were the typical color. Wait, hands? Why did it have hands where the paws should have been? I began to study the creature more. Features which just seconds before were that of a large cat were becoming more human-like before my eyes. What was once a black cougar or mountain lion is now a large, bulky man with long black hair and covered in black furs for clothing, eating the deer raw with only his hands. I couldn't help but let out a quiet gasp, but it wasn't quiet enough. The man stopped and didn't move for a few moments. I knew I had to get out of there, but didn't want him to be able to follow me home. He hadn't looked in my direction yet, and as he was beginning to stand, without thinking I launched the stick I had been using to aid my hike back down the path in the direction I came from. After hearing the crash, the man sunk back down and began creeping in that direction, becoming a cat yet again as he moved. Taking my eyes off of him as little as possible, as fast as I could without making a noise, I continued along the path. Once I felt like I was far enough away, I broke into a sprint and didn't stop until I was through my back door. I haven't seen the man or cat since, but I quickly convinced my dad to move to Cincinnati and haven't been back to those woods, so who knows if he's still around. I knew about the Wendigo, Skinwalkers, etc. before my encounter but though it didn't cross my mind until a few months ago when I was retelling the story to my younger cousin at Halloween to scare him. The problem is my story doesn't match up to many skinwalker stories I've heard. In nearly all others, the skinwalker takes on the form of a dog or related animal, and my part of the country isn't exactly known for them. Anyone know what else it could have been if not a skinwalker? A few years ago, 2012 or 13 I think, since I was still in high school then, I was at a party with some friends, and as the night goes on, maybe 11 or 12 at night, one of my friends and I go outside to have a cigarette. The second we get out there, there's just this completely awful, foul smell, just like vomit and decay all at once. Now this was in the middle of nowhere, so we just figured it was an old animal, and went on having a cigarette. Less than a minute later, we hear something moving in the dark, and sure enough, a deer comes hobbling into the very edge of the porch light. But then I noticed something. One of its front legs was messed up in some way. I'm talking like broken in multiple places messed up. So my friend and I are slightly put off by this, and finish up our cigarette and go inside. However, right as we start to do that, one of the two porch lights goes pop and then goes out. So now there's less light outside and the deer goes back into darkness. So, a bit giddy, we both do a fake scared squeal at each other and turn around and go inside. And that's when we heard it. That undeniable sound of nails on the concrete patio. We both slowly turn around and see this hunched over, rotten coyote doing this very slow, unnatural crawl toward us. We go from 0 to 600, paralyzed with fear, almost instantly, until another one of our friends playfully pulls us through the open door, telling us to get back to the party. To this day, I have not experienced anything like that, and it's one of the most horrifying things I've ever experienced.